How to start a photography business in 2022. One good thing to come out of the world flipping upside down is that we all got a chance to hit the reset button and choose a different way to move forward with our lives. And that means for some of us starting a new business. And starting a business now is different than it was a few years ago. So if I had to start over, here are the five things that I would do right away to get my business off the ground. And the last one is the most important. So do not cut out early. Make sure you watch till the end because it's going to bring it all together. It's showtime. Hello, I'm Mike Lloyd. I run a multi six figure boudoir studio in Silicon Valley, California, and I got to reinvent my business in the last couple years also. Now, I've been doing this 11 years, but I got to make some big changes. I couldn't shoot for almost eight months, so I got some time to sit down and think about what I liked, what I didn't, and what I wanted to do differently moving forward. And I almost got to start all over again. So here are the five things I did and what I suggest you do to move forward to get your business off the ground. Number one, really define what and who you want to shoot. Number two, getting legal the smart way. Number three, design your customer experience. Number four, create a marketing plan. And number five, be human. All right, so deciding who and what you wanna shoot. When most photographers get started, they're like, I don't know. I don't know what my style is. I don't know what I wanna shoot. Should I do weddings? I hear there's money in that. Or maybe I should do headshots or seniors are really big. Personal branding's also a big thing. Just pick one. You don't have to stay with this for the rest of your life. That's something really important to remember. But just choose something and get started. And when you choose one thing, you can think of others genres that'll feed off of that. So if you do weddings, maybe families is also a good thing and engagements and high school seniors because you can photograph the high school seniors. And then in five to 10 years, when they get engaged, you're going to be the one they call for that shoot, which could probably also lead to the wedding. And then once they start having kids, you shoot their families. So you're turning one client into several. And it's a really good way to build a sustainable business. Now you're like, I don't want to shoot kids. I don't want to do any of that. Weddings is just my jam. Or I only want to shoot boudoir. Or I only want to shoot whatever. Cool. Own it. Get on that. Decide who you want to shoot and what you want to shoot. The other thing to keep in mind, yes, you're going to be missing out, missing out in quotes, on other types of business. For example, I shoot boudoir. Occasionally I do headshots and marketing photos for friends. I don't shoot weddings. I don't do events. I don't do any of that. I get asked to and I say no because I don't enjoy it. I don't want to do it. I'm not as good at it. So saying no to those things frees up so much of my time and energy that I can book more sessions to doing the things that I want to do that I'm really good at. So from the beginning, when you write down what it is you want to do and who you want to shoot, it's also important to write down what you don't want to do and stick to your guns. All right, number two is getting legal. This is super important. And I don't just mean getting a business license. You also need to learn how to pay taxes. So get a CPA for that. Someone with experience working with small businesses. And once you have your tax structure in place, you also need to know what kind of business you should be. Should you be a C-Corp, an LLC? Do not be a sole proprietor. It is the easiest one to do, but it is the least useful as far as business goes. Now, if you're a sole proprietor, you just do your regular taxes at the end of the year as a single person or as a married couple, whatever, and it's super easy. But if somebody slips and falls during your photo shoot or decides they don't like the images and they want to sue you, they can come after your personal assets. I don't want anyone taking this home from me because, I don't know, for any reason, I want to keep my home and I want to keep my personal life separate from my business. That's why I have a corporation that I operate under. I'm an employee of the corporation. That's a whole other conversation. But keeping the business and your personal finances separate will protect you from liability. A good friend of mine is going through that right now. Her business got sued and because she's a sole proprietor, they're going after her house for damages. And she's been fighting this for years to keep their home. And you can't file for bankruptcy as a business owner if you're a sole proprietor and you own assets like a car and a home because they'll want you to sell those things to pay off the debt before you can file bankruptcy. Whereas if you're a corporation or an LLC, you can get rid of the business, file bankruptcy, start over, 
without losing your personal assets. And of course, your attorney, your tax person can walk you through all of this. But it's really important. Have your business license, your state resale license, collecting sales tax, paying your taxes, and have a CPA help you with that and a business structure that protects you and your company from liability. Really, really important. It's never too late to jump on board. No matter how long you've been doing this, get on it. All right, number three, design your customer experience. This is every single touch point somebody could have with your company from the first time they see your ad or hear about you from a friend to the time they book you a second time. Now, why do I say a second time and not just the time they're done with their photo shoot? Because when the photo shoot's done, you've delivered their gorgeous photos, how do you stay in touch to get them to book with you again? We don't want one-time clients, we want lifetime clients because they will also send their friends your way. It grows and grows and grows. And then you do less and less marketing over the years because you just have this huge loyal fan base. It's a pretty amazing thing. And this is everything from your Facebook ads, your blog, your website. It's how do your phone calls go? What is the booking process like? What is your onboarding process like? How do they prepare for their session? How do you greet them when they show up to your studio? I've got a sign outside that says, welcome. I write their name on it. It's got an inspirational quote. People always stop in front of the sign with their name on it, take a picture and share it to their Instagram. Free marketing, right? And it makes them feel welcome when they show up. Like they're not just another number. They're not just coming through an assembly line. I specifically took the time to hang a sign with their name on it, they feel good about that. I got custom made candles that I give to my clients after their sales sessions with my logo, my label on them. They are fancy and my clients keep them in their home. That's another touch point. Now they're looking at my name all the time, associating it with positive feelings. All those things are touch points and you get to design that whole process. Are you going to change it over time? 100% but it's good to just get started and write out every possible step from when they first hear about you to when they get in touch with you to when they book with you to how you stay in touch with them. All super important. And when you have that whole thing mapped out, you can see how the different parts connect to each other. Like how is your email list an effective tool for getting new people into your world and keeping them into your world? Same with your social media, any events that you put on, everything. And writing it all down forces you to look at it, acknowledge it, accept it, and work on it. Number four, create a marketing plan. Most photographers get started, post on their personal Facebook page, they're doing some mini sessions or some extreme flash sale, $99 for all the digital images, and you book nobody. And you're like, well, Facebook doesn't work. And then Facebook's like, have you tried boosting this post? And then you give them 20 bucks and you book nobody. And you're like, well, that was a waste of money. So Facebook ads don't work either. Hey, be back now. You get a free demon possession with every exorcism. You're like, well, that's not a marketing plan. So when you develop a marketing plan, you can say, well, I want to book 50 shoots this year, just as an example. 10 of those are going to come from Google traffic. Let's say 20 of those are going to come from vendor relationships and 20 will come from ads. All right, well, how am I going to get 10 from Google? Well, is it going to be Google AdWords? Am I going to work on my SEO? both. Then once they're on the website, how am I going to get them into my world? Do I have opt-ins to get them on my email list? Is it easy to book a consult? That is part of your marketing plan. Then we get over to the vendor relationships. Cool. What kind of vendors am I going to work with? How am I going to work with them? How do I provide value for them? How am I going to get clients into my world and then invite them to book me? Same thing with the ads. Are you going to run traffic ads to a blog post and then collect email addresses and market to them through email to get a consult? Or is it going to be a sale, $99 session fee sale, and you just book them right there? When you actually plan out what you're going to do from the first time they hear from you until they've paid a session fee and are ready to book you, that is going to help you succeed. Then you're not skipping steps. You're not just winging it. You have a plan of action that you can then follow through with. And once it's done, you figure out what went well, what didn't, and you adjust and get better next time. Point number five, and this is the biggest thing that has changed in the last few years. Be human. Avoid cliches. We're not saying things like, in these unprecedented times, they're very precedented now. We're a few years in, nothing is new, there are no surprises, just deal with it, right? But instead, you can be human and you can say, hey, I know we're all struggling. This is an opportunity to get out of the house. You've been homeschooling your kids, working from home, which has been awful. You can ditch the sweatpants and the mom bun and get your hair and makeup done and like have a day for you and not feel guilt and shame. These are opportunities to connect with your clients on a way more personal level 
and actually give them something that they need right now. Like it, it's never been easier to market to people because everyone is in need of this kind of care. We're pretty lucky. Silver lining, I would say. Be human. Connect with people as humans and don't just talk about the bad things that are happening in the world. Talk about how your products and services are the good things that can help brighten their day and change their life. Hey guy, come on, or some body go here. So there you go. Starting over with five things. One, figure out who you want to shoot, what you want to shoot, and also what you don't want to do. Number two, getting legal the smart way. Number three, design your customer experience. Make it so freaking good, people are throwing handfuls of cash at you and referring all of their friends. Number four, get a marketing plan. Because if you don't actually have it written down what you're doing, you're going to miss things and nothing's going to work. And number five, be human. Connect as a human. Be real. So if you want to learn more about how to run a photography business, you could head to boudoirguild.com and join the membership where I walk you through step-by-step how to do all of this and so much more, or just subscribe to the channel, watch more of these videos because I'm going to give you hours and hours of amazing content based on the things I actually do to make multi six figure income here as a professional photographer. And I would love for you to do the same. You're amazing. I'll see you inside.